I run one of the oldest living startups. I was reminded the other day on LinkedIn by 78 people who sent me the same congratulations that we've been around for 18 years. But when I got to Seattle 10 years ago, I realized that I only knew six people in the city. And I realized that one of the things that I should do is I should immerse myself in the startup community because I thought the startup community had the best energy of anything I'd ever seen in any community anywhere. And the Seattle startup community is truly remarkable. Um, Today we're going to talk to five different companies. They're each going to have five minutes. And in anticipation of their talks, I was reminded of two things. First of all was Kevin Spacey at at and uh, startup thing in, at CES said there are six words that will cause you to put down your phone. And those six words are, let me tell you a story. So these five startups are going to talk about and demo their products are all going to tell you a story. And while they're telling you the story, I want you to think about uh, a, a lesson that I learned recently by watching a video and a talk that Bill Gross of Idea Lab gave at uh, TED last year. So if you've not seen the Bill Gross TED Talk 2015, uh, go find it after, 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 after you see everybody. Because Gross got up in front of all the great and near greats who paid $8,500 to be in Vancouver for a ticket. And he said that he had looked at 200 companies, 100 that they'd invested in and 100 that other people had invested in. And he looked at those 200 companies and he tried to understand why companies had succeeded and why companies had failed. And he gave a 10-point score, 1 to 10, based on five criteria. So the five criteria were team, timing, product, execution, and financing. Okay, let me take you through those again. Team, timing, product, execution, and financing. And I've tried to talk to all the startups today about those. And when we're done, I'm going to ask them, each a question about how they address the most important criteria relative to Bill Gross, or how they are addressing, shall we say. So with no more ado, Brendan Bensing, come on up and talk about uh, my neighbor. Uh, grab a, one, the mic over here. Great. Probably don't need this huge pedestal. but. Um, Thank you, Buzz. I appreciate the intro. Um, real quick for everybody, uh, my name is Brendan. I'm the co-founder of My Neighbor. Um, my Neighbor is a mobile application that enables neighbors to borrow and lend goods and access services from one another. So if, if anyone here is like me and millions of other Americans, you may have an attic, garage, or basement full of things of value that you hardly ever use. And what I envision is a world in the future where everything that is sitting idle is really being utilized at its fullest potential. So as billions of dollars are being spent to fill our attics, garages, and basements full of things within an hour, my belief is if you just looked at every neighborhood the way that Amazon thinks about a warehouse and you thought about how much stuff is sitting idle, how do we access that? And that's what my neighbor is trying to do. So what are some of the key categories that we're seeing barring and lending happen? Camping, tools and equipment, sports and rec, these are the types of things that people have placed high value on, but very low utilization rate. The retail rental business in North America alone is a $15 billion business. So this is a very large sector, and I believe growing in terms of opportunity. How does it work? You download the application, you register in your, in your neighborhood, you post offers, you make requests of your neighbors, and you use the in-app capabilities to transact and to coordinate. Very straightforward, very simple. Now this is not the kind of app like Uber and Lyft where people are gonna quit their day jobs or their Uber jobs to take on full time. And what we've seen is the motivations are unique and I'll touch base on those in a second. So as I mentioned, the opportunity is significantly large. When you look at goods alone, the two key categories are do-it-yourself tools and equipment and party supplies. North America alone, $15.3 billion business. Home services and care services make it significantly large, and as Mitch talked about earlier, those markets are only growing. It's a typical marketplace 
We've started here in Seattle. Our intention is to expand across the country, and that's our 2016 goal is to expand beyond Seattle. So if you're a Seattle resident, and I know a lot of you aren't, feel free to download the app, give it a try, and certainly share feedback. We're an early stage company, but we believe the potential is enormous and that many, many people are sitting on goods that are sitting idle most of their time. Um, and it's a sad state of affairs that in North America there are enough self-storage facilities for every man, woman, and child to have a seven by seven square foot facility. That's shocking, and most of them are full. Um, we've, we've, we've been running a little trial here in Seattle. We have over 1,000 households that have logged on. Uh, and registered, what has been fascinating is 24% of those people have contributed to the marketplace. And they've contributed in one of two ways, either on the supply side or on the demand side. And what's been fascinating is the demand side gets significant liquidity in terms of velocity compared to the supply side. We're seeing interest across the country. People can download the app, but we have a kind of a coming soon experience, much like other marketplaces. Our model is a bottoms up model. You, you obviously need critical mass to make a marketplace like this work. But the motivations, as I mentioned earlier, and the reason that people who are using the service, their motivations are twofold. One is sustainability. They want to lead a more responsible life. And they understand that I shouldn't go out and buy that ladder when there's 15 ladders literally available to me within five miles of my house. Two is save money. There's an opportunity to save money here against retail or obvious purchase is the number one alternative to borrowing. So what we're trying to do is get people to borrow more and buy less. So think about your garage of the future and think about it differently than what you have in the past. The other thing that's interesting is we offer the ability for people who have posted offers to pledge a portion of those proceeds. Over 65% of the offers have a component of that income or fee associated with it going to charity. So as I mentioned earlier, this isn't something that people are going to quit their jobs, but if you start to think about consumption in a very different way, uh, we think it's extremely powerful. And we kind of call that consumption 3.0. So join me. Feel free to download the app, uh, answer any questions. After the panel, I'd be more than happy to meet with anybody. But the reality is this is definitely a timing. Attitudes and behaviors are changing about ownership, and that's what's unique and different. It's already dominated the digital world, and it's moving now quickly to the physical world. Thank you. Uh, Matthew, you got a live mic, and you got the clicker. Matthew Donegan Ryan, founder and CEO of uh, Fastbar. Go for it. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for including me. I love uh, coming to conferences. In fact, I've spent most of the last 10 years attending conferences and events. I've created two event technology companies um, that were acquired, and this is my, my third one. Um, attending lots of events has caused me to notice a couple of things, and one of the biggest things is that people hate lines at events. They hate lining up to buy a drink or food or merchandise, and so we've created a company to solve that problem. Um, not only do attendees hate the lines, but also the organizers or the bar operators hate the lines for, for lots of reasons. Um, for an attendee, if you're waiting in line to buy a drink, it means you're missing out on the speaker or the game or the entertainer. Um, you're not networking with other people or talking with your friends. You're just standing there waiting to pay for something. For a bar or bar operator, you're losing out on revenue. If people are waiting in line to buy a drink, it means they're not actually buying a drink. So it's taking longer and longer to serve them, and, and you're missing out on sales. And so in, you know, there's basically two ways to solve that problem. One is to add more uh, concession stations and more labor, and the other way is to make the transactions occur faster, which, what, which is what we've done at FastBar. So we've created a cashless payment system. It allows attendees at events to pay for items or redeem credits for items in less than a second. Um, the benefits is for you know, bar operators. They're going to increase the revenue from anywhere from uh, 15 to 35 percent. There's lots of industry studies that have proven um, cashless payments at festivals and events have increased revenue. We, uh, with our customers in particular, we typically see anywhere from about a 25 to a 50 percent increase in sales. And we have some events that have had as high as a 100 percent increase in sales. Um, there's also a decrease in labor costs. Instead of hiring more bartenders, more cashiers, more bussers, um, you don't need that extra labor because you don't need a cashier. The system can function as the cashier for you. 
and then of course is analytics. So you know, analytics at most events now um, are are um, not available. You know, at the end of the night, you can see how much money you've taken in and how much inventory is gone, but that's about it. Our system will show real-time reports on inventory control, sales, which bars are the most popular, which lines are the longest, and event organizers can then um, better distribute their employees to, to manage that demand. Um, we also provide in, uh, information back to attendees, so attendees can see what they're purchasing, how much it costs, they can adjust tips, they can close out their tab. It makes it a lot easier experience for the attendees as well. Uh, I'm sorry for the, the colors on the slides. It looks like the, the background color switched out, but the, the way our system works is attendees show up at an event. We have our check-in staff swipe their credit card. We've got a little um, off-the-shelf NFC and credit card reader that plugs into a phone or um, a smart uh, tablet. Um, we swipe an attendee's credit card, issue them an NFC wristband, and then take down their phone number. When they want to buy a drink or merchandise or food, they go up to the concession, they order their item, and um, our NFC reader will light up and they hold their, their wristband to the NFC reader and pay for the item, again, in less than one second. And then at the end of the night, the experience is pretty similar to you know, Lyft or Uber. When you get out of an Uber, you just walk away and it automatically closes out the transaction. Same thing happens with Fastbar. You leave the event, um, we know you've gone, we close out your tab, we send you a receipt, and there's no more you know, going up to the bar trying to get, get your receipt and close out your tab at the end of the night. So currently we're targeting bar operators at special events. Um, we're you know, growing this market to also target arena operators. We've had conversations with some of the largest um, arenas in the country. We've used our system at over 35 events. If any of you are attending South by Southwest next month, you'll be able to see our product used at the, the Bud Light House as well as the Budweiser Beer Garage. So if you're there, please come and check us out. Um, this is a, a massive opportunity for us. Over $35 billion a year is spent um, on food and beverages at, at special events. And you know our cut typically works out to about 10% of that revenue. So it's a large opportunity for us. We're replacing the, the typical ways people measure uh, or, ta or take accept payments at events, which is you know cash, credit cards, drink tickets, um, other cashless payment solutions like Apple Pay. And you know, our system is an entire e-commerce platform for an event. We have the points of sale, we have the check-in, we have the registration, we have the analytics, we have inventory management, and it's an entire system that most event organizers have not had access to in the past. Um, I think that's all my time. I will be around for the rest of the day. So if you're interested in using Fastbar at one of your events, or you're interested in joining our team, or even giving an investment, uh, I'd love to chat with you. Thanks. So grab it, grab it, grab a, uh so Artem. Probectus. Artem. Dobry den. Cocktail. Artem Petrov is the general manager of Probectus. Artem, take it away. Hi. Um, my name is Artem. I'm general manager at Provectus. So we do software development for, um, so we are, we help startups and enterprises to develop their custom software for We've been in business for more than five years, and uh, I'm managing a team group of developers focused on mobile development. So uh, our local office is in Palo Alto in California, and the uh, development team is in Ukraine. Actually, I'm from Ukraine originally, so sorry for my accent. Um, actually, we... Just work. Uh-huh, yeah, got it. So... Um, Actually, we developed more than 100 different applications for five years uh, in different verticals, uh, music space, hospitality, uh, healthcare, e-commerce, and so on. So uh, for instance, we have pretty big brands in our portfolio. For instance, in e-commerce space, we work with Men's Warehouse. Uh, we work with Live Nation Ticketmaster. With, in music space, we work with Gracenote. Uh, but since 2012, we start working with on-demand businesses. So, and we help more than 10 on-demand companies to develop their, uh, their to be their technology partner and to develop their products. And um, last year we realized that it's pretty good opportunity to develop platform framework to get these businesses faster to market. Because like in average, if you go with custom development, it takes around like half in a year, maybe seven, maybe in some cases even a year to develop from scratch, from idea to design, to, to develop, to QA, and to go live with on-demand product. So being um, 
UI UX people, so we, our methodology of development very focused on design. So uh, we realized that probably something white label is not for us. So that's why we, that's why we uh, decided to go with the approach. Once we created framework, it's backend framework helping us to, to, to build on the top of it business specific on demand products. So basically we have Provectus on demand solution. It's, it's modular system, it's modular uh, backend modular service. So uh, we have engine and we have a certain amount of modules that it can be attached to this server and uh, about our process. So we go to business, we define features that they need to add to this platform and uh, then we do custom development on the top of it. We create very UI focused, UI specific mobile applications for this because we are UI UX guys. So that's why we are trying to create good user experience for specific business. And then we launch on AWS, hold this system for client, go to App Store or Google Play with these applications. And here we go. So we can, you can go with this business, with this uh, mobile apps and, and, and focus specifically on your business. So it's for a few words about modules. So we have engine, we have like customizable uh, ordering module, we have calls, we have SMS, we have analytics. So right now product is like in MVP stage. So I think about 50% of these modules are like for MVP purposes, but still if you're for instance looking for like deep analytics for your product, we definitely have to, to develop it to add more, more features. Uh, about business model. So we are not going to charge any transaction fees and we are not going to charge per user. So we charge for customization and to, to start this product. So, um, and then we're going to charge monthly, monthly subscription fee. Just to give you ideas about numbers. So probably because we develop mobile applications from scratch, so it will, take, it will cost about like from 10 to 30 grand upfront and then from 500 till uh, $2,000 per month for maintenance for, uh, and for hosting and so on. Uh, still, we, because we are software developers, so we can continue adding new features to your product. So because white label solution, they give you like white label applications and that's it. So if you're going to add more features, if you see that your business require like, like more, um, I don't know, like and more analytics, more, more, more like calls, voice over AP, and so on. So we can add this to, the, to your, specifically your project. Uh, actually, I gave like idea, a couple of applications, on-demand applications that we developed like in past. It's uh, blown away, it's on-demand beauty service. It's Vegas, or it's everything about Las Vegas, so we can on-demand entertainment in Las Vegas. And PDQ is uh, on-demand uh, healthcare solution for nursing, so you can call nurse. So this application work in Las Vegas, in Texas, uh, in New York, uh, so we can go online and check the, these apps. So we, we, we are team, technology team that behind of these applications. So core differentiators, so this, we provide business specific approach, known templates. So still we have template, we have engine, and but, but our methodology allows us to go deeper and to, to create like very business specific UX for this. Um, we provide good quality because we are a software development company and we do pretty much pretty good QA process. So, and your product would work perfect. And uh, you know, I know that lots of, how to say, uh, current, current um, white label solutions. So we talk with people and they say that, you know, sometimes, uh, because of lots of Indian companies provide these solutions, so quality is not good. So we, we guarantee pretty high quality of your product. Uh, because we do custom development, we can do integration with your existing software. So for instance, if you're using QuickBooks, uh, if you're using CRM, so this service can work with your existing software. Uh, at Provectus, we have a network operations, uh, uh, network operating centers, so we can do monitoring of uptime of your service 24 seven. So if something goes wrong, we have red light and, and engineers will fix it. So we provide hosting and maintenance and as I told, we provide development of new features. 
thanks uh, this brief dis description of our service. So if you're interested, please get in touch with me. Thank you so much. Uh, hand off the mic yeah. and the clicker to Cole Winans of Flyreel. Cole, uh, he needs uh, uh, AV help from our uh, esteemed uh, leader. Artem, just grab an extra stool there. Just put that. Mm -hmm. my display. Okay. Good. You had a Windows machine that would work. Oh, don't don't start <laughs> with that. Yikes. All right. Now I should get it out of the way there. Okay, so in just a moment, I'll show you a really cool demo. Uh, but before I get started, my name is Cole Winans, and I'm fortunate enough to be the CEO of a new startup called Flyreel. And uh, essentially what we do is if you get stuck on a problem or you have a question and you need a bit of help, you can just speak into the phone, and we look at what you say, and then we route you to the best local expert. So it's using a little bit of NLP and some NLU, uh, and so right now we're really focused on some narrow categories because we're about to launch and uh, we'll put it out probably next week. So if you're stuck working on something around the house or you're taking on a new home project like installing a sink and you just get stuck on that one piece and it's not fitting just right and you could maybe use a little bit of help from someone else, right now the way it works is you go to YouTube, you look at about five or six videos you cruise around and on average you spend about an hour trying to figure it out. When there's probably someone, maybe even down the street from you, that has that answer and can walk you through it. And so that's kind of why we built this. And from a personal perspective, um, this idea really came from me getting stuck on an issue at home. I had, uh, I have this amazing wife and she <laughs> rescues animals. Uh, and so she got a, a dog and the dog was kind of hanging out in our yard and it just happened to chew through one of my cables uh, for a barbecue that I had just gotten. Bit of an issue, and so uh, Randy, who's uh, I'm lucky enough to be partners with in this, is a very handy guy. I'm not. So I called Randy and I said, what do I do? And he goes, just crimp it. And I was like, what? What's, I don't even know what a crimp is. <laughs> and so I spent some time online, uh, found out what crimping was, found out I needed a crimp tool, started watching all these videos on YouTube, and the first thing the guy says is he goes, if you're using a 20 gauge cable, do this. Oh, how, do I know? <laughs> how do I know what gauge of cable I'm using? I have no idea. So I was completely stuck, didn't know what to do. After about an hour or two of research, I finally figured out just the tools I needed to crimp the cable. Uh, I still didn't even know how to do it. So we kind of worked on that problem, and this is our solution. Uh, again, we're about to put this out in about a week, and I'm going to run the risk of doing a live demo here. Uh, so bear with me if something just doesn't go to plan. But uh, essentially what happens is you come into the app, and uh, I can just come in here, and I'll hold down this button, and I'll say what I need help with. What I can do is I'll type because the desktop's taking over. So I'll just say uh, my cable broke. I'll hit chat with expert. And now what's happening is it's going out, it's looking at what I've said, and it's finding the relevant experts that can help me. And in this case, we've kind of set it up so Randy at the back of the room gets it. So it's contacting one expert in my area that knows what I need help with. And when they're available to help, uh, it gives me this option here where I can accept their help or pass. If I hit accept, it immediately sends me into a live chat session where Randy and I can talk it out, and if by chance I need to show him uh, what's going on, I can connect over a video call. This on average takes about 10 to 15 seconds, so we might have a little bit of a wait time. But you can just imagine, there he is, there's Randy in the back of the room. 
So if Randy were an electrician, he'd be able to walk me through exactly how to crimp uh, my cable. So why would a local expert do this? Well, here's one of the reasons. Uh, by the end of the call, if they've been really helpful, I can just give them a rating. Um, what does that mean? Well, it's street cred. It's the same reason why people go on YouTube and they share really great content with hopes of promoting their brand and engaging with people and answering questions and becoming that local expert. Um, and so that's uh, one of the core reasons why people are starting to jump on here and local businesses are using Flyreel. Uh, another reason is uh, this is already happening. People are emailing and sending pictures um, to garden centers and asking, calling them up and saying, is the bug on my plant a good one or a bad one? Uh, how do they know? <laughs> they have to describe these little bugs and it's just a mess. So there are a number of opportunities for you to just engage and tap local expertise in your area. Uh, and we think we're the best application for it, and we're looking forward to jumping into some more categories outside of home services shortly. So, thank you. Uh, thanks. Uh, next up, uh, Bruce Worrell, Intellisphere. Mr. AV guy, are we ready to rock and roll? I'm trying to remember why I unplugged it. Uh-oh. 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 Uh -oh. We'll get you started. Now we're screwed. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. You didn't have that class growing up, Mitch? Not the dongle. Not the dongle class. Not there yet? Nope. We need a new AV guy now. Really <laughs> yeah. Fire the AV guy. Uh, AV, AV on demand. There you go. You might be on to something. Yeah. There, there's a market. <laughs> I actually gave a talk recently at Microsoft to an accelerator group, and I created this big mind map and all the things you need to do about communicating and giving a talk and marketing and guerrilla marketing. And I had a bullet that said, remember the dongle. Inside joke. Okay. <laughs> Got to mirror the screen. Need your keyboard. It's not even on the screen. <laughs> Another point that I wanted to make about the startup community in Seattle is I've been totally fascinated by how supportive everybody in the startup community is of other people in the startup community. And I've been told that here in Seattle it is dramatically different than in the Bay Area. In the Bay Area, everybody's trying to step on your hand to keep you from being successful. Mm. Up here, people are helping each other. Oh, Bingo. Intellisphere. Bruce, go for it. All right. Thanks, Buzz. So Intellisphere, just an uh, overview, short and dirty, is if you thought of, you know digital marketing space, if you know HubSpot, you know Hootsuite, uh, you know uh, maybe Simply Measured, a number of these companies, if you kind of roll them all together into one tool, very comprehensive marketing suite, um, and charge $15 a seat, that would be Intellisphere. Targeted small business, we, we refer to it as, as, a, uh, as a business acceleration platform for small businesses, and we're really focused on kind of customer-driven um, uh, kind of engagement, if you will, or outside-in customer engagement. So almost everyone here has certainly seen charts like this where you know, basically um, the, the growth of the online marketing ecosystem is, is somewhat overwhelming, even for large companies, but for small companies, um, it's, it's just daunting. So we, we step in with a, with a tool set that makes it very easy to, to basically reach out across a variety of channels. And um, you know, the other problem in this, uh, with this picture is you could also put the consumer in here as well. And the consumer is just getting buried with a bunch of messages that are coming to them that are not relevant because most of these, these companies don't know how to actually market effectively and really engage customers. So from um, an on-demand uh, on uh, generation standpoint, um, you guys have probably seen these statistics throughout the day or, or such, but about by 2020, 50% of the U.S. work population, or almost, will be millennials. And that's a really important statistic because they're a very demanding group. You know, they're, they're, they're born, they're you know, an interaction, and they really care about cust you know, control, customer uh, convenience, um, choice, and communications really on their terms. So kind of these four Cs. And for any on-demand company to be successful, you really need to make sure that you're, you're hitting those four Cs. The good news is for big companies, like the people at Gartner interviews, 
um, they have about, sorry, <laughs> uh, they, they have about 90% of companies have said that customer experience is really the, the next big thing for them and, and, that, uh, and that's really a holistic view of the customer. Some people have talked about it earlier today with you know, people picking up the phone and what it, whatever it is. So that's good that uh, people are addressing the, you know, the need um, around this customer experience issue. The other thing is that when you ask marketers what's important to them in 2016, they tend to talk about optimizing customer experience, you know, developing compelling content, so a lot of it video content, but in general content that really engages people, and then using data-driven marketing to um, effectively personalize the experience for the, for the end customer. But one of the challenges is, is how do you know you're doing that effectively? How do you know that you know, there are metrics, but at the end of the day, it's kind of this engagement process with the customer. That's where we get back to kind of customer-driven. Whoop, kind of jump two screens ahead there. So from our perspective, customer-driven is really about, it's a systematic approach for engaging, uh, engaging users, kind of from outside in, so from their needs, understanding their needs, understanding their behavioral triggers, and then creating your content, then creating um, your, your promotional offers, right? And we do that all with surveys and poll questions and a whole series of things that kind of start the process off. Uh, and then we, we kind of go from there. But the objective really, of course, is empowering the customer, delighting them, engaging them in your company, um, building up brand affinity, and, uh, and customer advocacy, the, the, the kind of the ultimate goal. And so what's required to do that is a new set of tools. Some of them are the existing tools that you see out there today and so social media, but some of them are tools that include um, things like surveys, net promoter scores, a bunch of other elements that kind of start off the process and then are ongoing, if you will. So I, I didn't, uh, I could probably spend an hour demoing in Telesphere. It's a very robust platform, but I just wanted to show you a slide or two. Um, at the top here, you'll see that there's a content area at the very top. You'll see these, we call them labs, because we, we view marketing as kind of a combination of art and science. And uh, so we have a content area. You can think of that as kind of like a hoot suite. Uh, we have a notifications area where all of your customer engagements come in, whether somebody's responded to a poll question, activated a coupon, given you a business review, um, liked a post, connected to you, whatever it is. So that all shows up over there. We have a CRM, which is we call it connections because you, you pull, we pull in your social connections, your contacts, your, your customer list, et cetera, and slice and dice that in different ways. We have a lead generation module and, uh, along with a lead nurturing process so we can actually pull leads in from different sources and you can work those leads right in there as part of the process. We have a reputation tool which does two things. It, it does social listening so you can see what people are saying about your brand and do sentiment analysis. We also have a, um, the ability to do business reviews and send out these business reviews, get them back. Everything goes back into the CRM and into the analytics engine. All these pieces come together. So you're, you're building these large profiles on customers the more you interact with them, right? And then you can do more personalized individual you know, communications. Um, of course, we, we have analytics. We have a very rich analytics suite. We have actually 10 reports that we, we offer as kind of part of the base package. Mm -hmm. And again, we, we do this at a, at a crazy low price. And the screen you see popped up there, so we're kind of in the promotions area here. So every one of these has, has different sets of areas. So you'll see there's, a, there's an offer area, so it's kind of like the equivalent of creating a Groupon. You can do it in a couple minutes. We don't take a cut. It just goes out. You send it out through your social channels. You send it out through email. Put it on your website. This kind of thing's very easy to do. Um, you can do business reviews, so you can, ask, you can ask for customer reviews. You can actually start to tie promotional things into you. can give people incentive to give you a business review. So we'll give you this kind of discount. Um, you'll see in another slide, we actually have a mobile application. You actually do that at the point of sale as well. Uh, we have social banners, which, uh, which is allows you to basically, uh, in essence, monetize drive actions across your social post when you choose to do that. Um, poll questions, surveys, you know, really quickly, easy to do. Um, so that's kind of the start of the, the customer engagement process for us. So that's just one, one, of the, one of the labs that we have is this promotions lab. And then um, just as a sample slide, so we have a mobile application uh, which you can use right at the point of sale. You can train your, um, anybody who's at the point of sale, wait staff, um, your retail staff, if you're in a hotel, you know, you're, you know whoever's uh, in the hotel, to ask for, give us a, can you, would you give us a business review? You know, how was your meal? How was your overnight stay? Um, how was your experience in the store, right? And then you can give them an incentive right at the point of sale. You can say, you know, he, uh, if you give us a review, we'll, we'll give you this particular incentive, or you can give them a choice of different offers and say, which one would you like? and start to learn more what your customers want, right? At that point, you, you capture the name and address of the person, you send it over to them, and um, they fill out the review, the coupon automatically goes to them, and they just basically can use it right at the point of sale. So, you know, very easy to capture business reviews, very easy to get these promotions at the point of sale, as well as to kind of burst them out. Um, we're adding SMS, we've actually did a big project for a company where um, we 
we had about 40,000 transactions occur within a couple of days. We thought it was super cool. So we said, hey, we'll roll that into the product. We're writing email at the end of this month, et cetera. So very reasonable price, really powerful structure. And um, we, our, our, partners, our model for distribution is, is around partnerships primarily. So we look to deal with uh, – we, we sell individually to indi individual customers, but in general we look for, you know, hosting companies, um, our box, you know, companies who have lots of small businesses. Uh, and the reason for that is because we want, we're a volume game at the end of the day. $15 a month, you don't make that much, so we, we try to sell in bulk. But anybody can go onto the site, sign up. We have a 30-day free trial. And anybody in this room can, can basically use this promo code SPRING16 and get another three months free. We'd love to get your feedback on the product, get some input, and um, you know, we kind of practice what we preach in terms of you know, working with cohorts and understanding what their needs are and improving our product. Thank you. Just stand down there at the end of the, of the, of the, of the keep the mic, okay. keep the mic. So uh, a moment ago I talked about team timing, execution, product, and financing. So I'm going to tell you the answer, and then you can tell me how you're dealing with the, the question. Okay? Let's make it real simple. This is sort of like in law school. They tell you the answer, and then they have you reason how you get to the answer. So uh, Gross said that the most important criteria, team timing, execution, product, and financing, was timing. And so, Bruce, why is the time right for Intellisphere? Yeah, fr from our perspective, we spent three years building a really amazing product. And now we're, we've, we've built out the team. So now we're, we're launching. So the time is right. Um, we're, we're actually raising around. Um, we feel like we are getting early stage traction, having great conversations with a number of partners. Um, so again, our, our model is a partner model. We've got a lot of conversations going on. So we feel that the timing is right uh, for, for us. Okay, hand the, uh, uh, hand the mic to Cole. So Cole, why is, why is the timing right for Flyreel? Well, I think if you look at our technology, you can see why this year is probably the best year we could ever launch an application like this. Um, when I was demoing it, you could probably see that when it comes to the user interface, there's really nothing there. You speak into the application, it listens to you, it knows what you need help with, and then it just connects you to a person. So we're combining the greatest technologies of this year from text-to-speech or voice control, which you're starting to see with Amazon, uh, to live video, uh, which you're now seeing uh, come of age with Periscope and some of the newer technologies on Facebook, with natural language processing and machine learning, or AI, which this is the year of AI, combined with a conversational technology, which is essentially a messenger, and messaging is one of the best technologies we have today. Artem, why is time right for you guys? Uh, you, you know, during the gold rush, uh, so I, I like this story that during the gold rush, uh, so earned more money, people not who were mining gold, but people who were helping them with tools and with everything else. So uh, actually based on the amount of requests that we're receiving for custom development and uh, you know, we're working with non-technical startups and lots of people who are going to launch on-demand business but without technical teams. So they have expertise, for instance, in healthcare. They know how, and they have expertise in, I don't know, stylists, but still they're looking for development team. They, they have idea, they know business processes, but they're looking for someone who can help them. So definitely for us it's good timing because Lots of companies are looking for cost-effective solution, and, and and we can bring this product very fast to market. Matthew. Yeah, so cashless payments have been out for over a decade, and the, the reason they haven't been too successful up until now is you know hardware was ex expensive, and consumers weren't um, actively asking for that type of technology. Um, but now it's become more available. You know, Robert mentioned earlier at Levi's Stadium, they, they're using um, you know beacons and mobile apps for payments. Um, companies like you know Levi Stadium or Disney can afford to create this great technology, but uh, other events, one-off events, can't afford to create some uh, you know billion-dollar type of technology for their event. So now is the right time for us. Consumers are ready for it, and the hardware has already been incorporated into many venues and events. Brendan, uh, three reasons. One is uh, a shift in the mobile lifestyle, um, being predominantly led by millennials who have a shift in attitudes and behaviors over ac from access to uh, ownership. And that is a fundamental shift that is happening now and it's obviously under the umbrella of shared economy. But the third reason that we are really trying to be is a fast follower behind Nextdoor. One of the things that we see is they are plowing the field to create a highly connected neighborhood. 
And once that happens, we believe there'll be unique opportunities to benefit from that. The majority of our customers today come from referrals off of Nextdoor. Thanks, guys. Come on down. Um, I'm a big believer in the timing model. Uh, you know, we haven't figured that out yet. We've been around too long, so maybe our time has passed. But having said that, uh, one thing I wanted to do before I gave up the mic to Mitch is I wanted to do a little shout outs. Um, my friend Doug Warner's here. Where's Doug? Doug was here a moment ago. Uh, Doug's behind the pillar. Uh, I ran a startup weekend in Bozeman, Montana in April. And Doug was a keynote speaker, and he talked about Drop Trip. And he gave a brilliant talk. So he's here visiting from Bozeman. And he's got a very clever idea. And if you have time, talk to him before the day's out. Um, yesterday, Scoble and I ran around Seattle. And we met with two very cool companies, one called uh, VR Studios. And Mary Jessie from VR Studios was here. And she's coming back. And if you see her, talk to her about VR Studios. It's killer technology. Uh, the, th the second thing we saw was Travis Murdoch and Atlas. And Atlas is here in Pioneer Square. And they're building a personal search engine. And if you see Travis, tap him for being involved in their beta, because I thought that what they're doing is game changer. Um, next up, Scoble and I did a uh, GeekWire radio episode. And um, Robert talked, John talked, Todd talked, and I had to listen. There wasn't enough mic time for me to talk in the conversation. So the GeekWire radio with Robert and the GeekWire guys is going to be up, I think, Friday or Saturday on uh, Cairo Radio and on the podcast. And then uh, last but not least, when I came to Seattle, there were literally no events going on. And I put my own little personal event on and invited a bunch of people, and now there's tons of events. So sitting in the back room is my friend Brett Green. Brett, raise your hand. So Brett and his partner, Red Rusek, run an event called New Tech Seattle, and they do it here, they do it in Bellevue, and in Tacoma, right? And it is once a month event, and there's two, three, four hundred people in the room. Uh, fabulous opportunities for startups to get up and talk about what they're doing. Great opportunities to network. What's it cost, 10 bucks to go come, Brett? Yeah, I mean, it, it is the bargain to meet all the people you need to, to have to build out your team and build out your product. So, anyway, Mitch. We're back on schedule. We're back on schedule. Oh.